Hi everyone, my name is Nicholas Sagrasso and this will be my presentation for CS490 Senior Seminar at San Diego State University. And my topic today is going to be covering Mapbox. Uh, here's an overview, just basically going to go over what Mapbox is, uh, why people use it, um, and just going to give a demo on how to use the Mapbox JavaScript API, as well as showing some uh, resources if you want to learn more about how to use it. Uh, yeah, so let's get started. So. If you didn't already know, Mapbox is becoming a popular alternative to um, applications like Google Maps, um, probably because of the uh, recent price hike that happened last year for the amount of API calls that Google raised, um, which kind of upset a lot of people. So now people are starting to go look towards other alternatives like Mapbox because of the amount of um, calls you can do with the API per month. Um, which is why bigger companies like Tinder, uh, Snapchat, and other um, big name companies like Weather Channel um, are starting to use Mapbox more. So, yeah, there's more you can list. You can list through here, but um, yeah, let's get started. So, in order to use uh, the Mapbox uh, access token and use their APIs, you need to create an account. So. Let's go over here. Uh, basically, just once you create an account, you can start using their Mapbox Studio. I'll go in there right now. Cool. And as you can see, I already created a few templates. Um, but for this demo, we're just going to start from scratch. I also want to point out if you want to import your own data for the maps that you're going to create, you can do that on the data sets tab and import something like a JSON file or a CSV um, with coordinates and all that stuff. Uh, Mapbox will recognize it. But let's do a new template. We're just going to do the, the basic one, but if you have other options to choose from, you can choose those. Let's do that guy. All right. And this is Mapbox Studio. Um, Overall, there's a lot of uh, customization features available to you. If you want to do something very personalized, you can do that here. But for this demo, I mean, we're just going to go over the basic, um, just like changing maybe the font color of some of the labels on the map. Let's do that. You can filter through your layers. Let's say I want to label. I want to go to. Suburbs. Let's go to a color like light blue on that guy. Let's change that guy to a green or something. And let's change the city label to. And also, this is a. You can change the colors at different zoom layout levels. So. As it changes the scale, you can change the color. Um, let's go for let's say like red. Let's go get a, make a lighter red. That's fine. Okay. Pretty straightforward. And let's go to first. Let's actually name our template. And let's go to our hometown here. Perfect. Zoom in to right about there. Actually, these didn't change. Let's actually change one more. Yeah, this guy didn't change. Let's change it to. Let's go to like a. Lighter, darker, that's fine. Cool. So let's say we've done our customization, we're done, and we want to publish this map for other people to look at and use. So, what you would have to do first, make sure we lock our position. And once we've done that, we can go publish. Nice feature is you can see the original versus the changes you've made. And that's we're gonna go to straight to publish. Get public. Like 
pixels and make sure that is still that's fine just make sure it's saving that position right and now that we've got all that done we can go share uh, you can follow that link and open up a new tab and it'll actually load your map but what we care about is the source code for embedding it in a web page. So, and you can also have options for iOS, Unity, all that stuff, which is pretty cool that you can do it in Unity. Um, but what we care about here is um, the scripts for JavaScript. And I've already, um, I've already included the links for the um, JavaScript and uh, CSS in my HTML page. So just make sure you put those in there. Make sure they're the most up-to-date and recent ones. Um, what we're going to do is basically use JavaScript so that we um, populate the map inside our div that we have already created here. And just hit the ID to map so it knows which one it is. So let's paste that in there. And obviously the most important is going to be our token. So let's make sure that uh, Mapbox knows that it's an authenticated user. And also want to point out that our maps need to load at a certain height and like length. So all I did was just set the height to 500 pixels and set the bottom margin to 50 pixels. So um, just make sure you set the height for the map. I think that should be fine. Just so it loads properly. And once we've done that, just make sure you get the ending braces. Save that, and then we're going to go to our local host here, refresh the page, and our map should load up right away. Cool. Nice. And once that's done, um, you'll notice that it doesn't have all the normal features you would see in a map, maybe like a, a zoom in and zoom out. That's not, uh, the buttons don't really show up, but they do show up in the one when you open up a new tab, but you can still zoom in like normal. And let's say you want to change the angle, you can do hold right click and it'll change the way you, um, this is just good for if you want to do a 3D map or something like that. But yeah, so once you've done that, um, let's say you want, let's say you didn't like the customization you did and you just want to use one of the pre-existing templates that are out there, well, you can go to their documentation and they have a lot of, there's a lot of documentation on this. Um, you can actually look for styles here and there's actually a few to choose from. So let's say I want to do streets. I think that's a good one. I'm just going to copy that guy and we're just going to overwrite the one that we created. I dropped that guy in there. And in our local house, it'll change. And now it adopts the um, the new style styling that we put in there. So pretty easy and simple to use for plug and play stuff. So, um, but let's say we want to get a little more um, practical with examples. So let's say you're a restaurant who wants to make a website and you want to embed a web map into your website that features a pointer to where your restaurant is. Um, you should probably figure out how to do that. So. What we're going to do is add a marker to the map and just add it at a certain location. So all you really have to do is just a few lines and just call a variable we need marker equal to new mapbox gl dot marker and set a to our certain longitude and latitude we already have. I'm just going to copy the one we um, already have here. Our center, just so it shows up at the center of our page when we load it up. And the last thing we need to do is add it to the map. And done. Save that guy. And let's refresh the page. You notice our marker pops up and we can see it there. Just say it's right there for now, but that's fine. 
Um, and you can also do other things. Let's see if you wanted to click on it, you could actually have it so a pop-up appears. So it maybe has the information like, hey, this is the name of our restaurant and here is our 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 cuisine so is I don't know, Mediterranean or something like that. But um just a lot of things you can do in uh, Mapbox. But yeah, that is pretty much a good summary of the demo. Um, and now I just want to like point out, obviously, like if you want to learn more about um, the Mapbox uh, JavaScript library, um, just want to point out that you can look through all this documentation. They have a lot of examples um, on how to use their library, um, how to add an image or icon, display satellite imagery, um, 3D modeling, and all that stuff. But yeah, um, that is the end of the demo, and all my references have been through Mapbox, so I don't think um, there's much else to see so my information from. Um, but yeah, that is about it. Thank you guys.